I'm Mark Hallin, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In tank flow, how much water is moving around inside your tank at any given moment? This is usually expressed as tank turnover rate, and it's really easy to calculate. For example, let's say we have a 100 gallon tank, and the devices that make flow in the tank are cranking out 1,000 gallons an hour worth of flow. That means we're turning over our 100 gallon tank 10 times an hour. Super simple, right? Now there's reasons to have in-tank flow in your reef tank. Corals need it, and even if you have a fish only with live rock tank, in-tank flow is important as well because it can manage fish aggression and it's going to make your fish more active because they're going to get out there in the flow. Now there's two main ways to create in-tank flow in your system. One, with a closed loop, and two, with power heads. But wait, doesn't the water coming out of your return line count towards your tank turnover rate? It does, but not enough to make a difference, and here's why. You simply can't crank enough water out of your return line to make a dent towards your target tank turnover rate. For example, good target tank turnover rate for a mixed reef system is somewhere around 50x. So on my 1,000 gallon reef, if I wanted 50 times tank turnover, and I'm just using my return line, that means I gotta crank 50,000 gallons an hour out of that thing. That means big pump, it's gonna make a lot of noise, create a lot of heat, use a lot of electricity, and then, my overflow box has to be able to handle 50,000 gallons an hour, which means it's gonna be really big. I'm gonna have lots of water rushing through it, lots of water running down pipes noise, and no, you're not gonna tune a drain line that's handling 50,000 gallons an hour. Now look, even those of you with a 75, 90 gallon tank, the return pump water, the volume there isn't gonna make enough to count towards your tank turnover rate. The exception with all this is nano tanks, small all-in-one tanks. With those systems, a lot of times the only flow, in-tank flow that you're getting is the water from the return pump pumping water from the back chamber into the main part of the display. So, return pump, yes, it adds some tank turnover rate, some in-tank flow, but not enough to count. Since return pump flow is out, that leaves us with closed loop systems and power heads to create in-tank flow. And look, power heads are vastly more popular because they're super easy to deploy. You don't have to make any mods on your tank, and there's lots of types out there. You've got magnetically coupled ones like the Vortex, you've got gyro types like the AI Orbit, and then you have more traditional type power heads with the c Extreme X-Stream and the AI Nero. So there's all different types out there. There's low flow power heads, there's high flow power heads, so no matter what size tank you have, there's some kind of power head that's appropriate for your system. Modern day power heads are also really great because it's very easy to adjust flow, not only in terms of the rate of flow, but also the type of flow. Tech has made power heads not only very powerful, but also very useful and very smart. Even with power heads with no tech, you can always turn your power head on or off to create varying flow patterns. But all these types of power heads have two big shortfalls. No matter what type of power head you have, something is visible. Either you see a cord going into the tank, or you've got a cord on the outside of the tank, like with a vortex, or you see the pump itself. Some of you may say, well, so what? I can't see all the way around my tank. And that's true in that case. However, here's where the visibility part starts to fall apart. Four side viewable tanks, room dividers, peninsula tanks. I'm not gonna put a power head right here on this long edge viewable side of my tank because I need flow right here. That would totally ruin the look. So that means I can only put power heads over there and power heads over there. Power heads can only throw water so far. This is a bit of a big tank problem. So those of you with two foot, three foot, four foot, maybe even five foot tanks, it doesn't apply to you so much, but it's something to know and be aware of as we start to learn about power heads. So power heads can only throw water so far. And look, I gotta put the disclaimer in there because people love to point out disclaimers. The Abyss flow cannon is pretty dang big and it can throw water really far. But for nearly all of us, it doesn't make sense. Even in my thousand gallon, 12 foot tank, if I put one of those suckers in here, It'd be really cool, Alex, if you're listening, but it'd be like this big thing. So, for most power heads, that makes sense for most hobbyists, they're only gonna throw water so far. So, eight foot, nine foot, 10 foot, 12 foot tanks, you're gonna have this dead area in the center of the tank where you don't get as much flow. Especially again with room dividers, peninsulas, four side viewable tanks where we can't put power heads on these viewable panes. 
So on my tank, I'm gonna get flow to, you know, roughly about here and then down there from the power heads on either end and that's it. So I've got this lower flow section in the center of my tank. Could just put soft corals there, nothing wrong with soft corals, but if I had SPS on the ends of my tank and just soft corals in the center, it looked a little strange. Variety is the spice of life. I want a mixed reef tank and be able to put mixed reef corals all over the tank. So one of the limitations of power heads is they can only throw water so far. And yes, I could add multiple power heads like I did on one end of my tank to compound it, but I still have that limitation. We're gonna run out of flow where we need it towards the center of tanks. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not dogging on power heads because they make a lot of sense in lots of situations for most hobbyists and they're super easy to deploy. And also they've come a long, long way in terms of the tech and the capabilities, not only of the flow created by the power heads, but also the variability of changing the flow pattern. So not down on power heads, just pointing out the pros and the cons of them and some of the shortfalls of a power head. That's where a closed loop system really starts to shine. So what's a closed loop system? Well, it's a system where water enters underneath the water level and then it exits underneath the water level. Usually these inlets and outlets are placed on the bottom of the tank, sometimes they're on the back or the sides of the tank. Then system of piping connects these inlets and outlets and it's all powered by a pump. On my tank, I've got two separate closed loop systems, each with their own abyss pump. Now I'll get to those pumps in a minute, but keep this important fact in mind about closed loop systems. Since closed loop systems utilize holes in the bottom, back, or sides of the tank, they're nearly always put in the tank when it's being fabricated. I haven't heard of anyone looking at the tank going, hmm, I need some more in-tank flow. Let me drain my tank, move back the rock and sand, drill some holes in it, put in some bulkheads in a closed loop system, test it, move everything back, and see what we get. But look, if that's you, let us know about it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. So, you gotta be thinking ahead when it comes to a closed loop system. And some of you listening to this are going, hang on a minute, Mark. You said holes on the bottom back or the sides of the tank. That means if one of those bulkheads or the closed loop systems leak, that means that you could drain out your tank. And yes, this is a risk with closed loop systems. However, this risk can be managed. Beefier bulkhead, beefier plumbing, high quality pumps, high quality ball valves, not that stuff that you find at the home improvement store. All these things make closed loop systems safer and I don't lose any sleep at night knowing that I've got a thousand gallons of water in my house with holes in the bottom of the tank and closed loop systems that could leak out. I also don't lose any sleep at night knowing I've got the same systems in clients, million dollar homes out there. So it is a risk. It is a risk that can be managed. In the words of one of my clients, the juice is totally worth the squeeze for closed loop systems for a couple of main reasons. I'll talk about those on the other side of my tank. Four side viewable room divider tanks, peninsula tanks, really long tanks, really deep tanks. We've run out of places to put power heads due to their visibility. And even on a deep tank, if you could bury that power head in the rock work, it's gonna suck up sand to get that flow that you need at the bottom of the tank. So some of the shortcomings of power heads are made up for with closed loop systems. Look on my tank, I cannot get the in tank flow that I need without the closed loop systems in here. And since the pump is outside of the tank, there's no cord to try to hide, and you can't see the inlets or the outlets in my rock work because I've disguised them so well. So again, don't get me wrong, power heads have their use, but their shortcomings can be made up with with a closed loop system. Back in the day, your closed loop system was really low or no tech. That's because AC pumps powered these systems, which meant the pump was on or off. Nowadays, we have DC pumps, which can create variable speeds to create all kinds of different flow patterns. For example, the Ecotech vector pumps. You can put those in a closed loop and you can change them into closed loop mode to create different flow patterns. On my tank, I've got two closed loop systems, each with an abyss pump powering them. That abyss pump is controllable via zero to 10 input, so I can ramp up or down my flow pattern throughout the day to create variable types of flow that I want. Like when you have the capability to create different flow in your tank, by all means do it. Do it with your power heads and do it with your closed loop pump as well. Make sure you choose a closed loop pump that's a DC controllable so you can create all different types of flow patterns. The vast majority of hobbyist tanks are gonna get the in-tank flow that they need from power heads. And look, part of me is a little bit jealous about that fact. All you gotta do is add more power heads if you need them, you don't have to mess with a closed loop. But when you need a closed loop system, when done properly, they're very safe and they're super, super useful. So there you go. 
There's a look at power heads versus closed loop systems when it comes to in-tank flow. Let us know what works for your tank. What's your experience with both of these? And I'll catch you in the next episode.